Whether you were an Irish monk, a Gaelic chieftain, a Viking raider, or a Norman trader, the one vital piece of equipment you needed in order to access Loch Gree's shores and islands was a boat of some description. And of course, the same applies in this day and age. For a good bit of the 20th century, the man to go to if you wanted a boat tailor-made for Loch Ree was Jimmy Fury, who though now in his 90s, still lives in the little cottage by the shore near Le Carreau, where he's lived and worked all of his life. Late on in that life, for no other reason than to pass the time, Jimmy made the beautiful and delicate model boat that I'm holding. Jimmy, how long ago was it you made this, you tell me? Oh, I think uh, to be near of 20 years ago. 20 years ago? It could be. It could when, you, be. when you were a young man of only well, 70. A good bit more anxious to work that time than I am now. Right, right. But, but it's a beautiful piece of work. And this won a prize or something, didn't it? Yeah, a gold medal at, the, at the model boat show in Wembley. In Wembley? Yeah. And were you over with the boat? No, it was the brother, brother Paddy that said now. That took it over. He took yeah. it over. Yeah. Right. right. That's a beautiful. What kind of a boat is it? How would you describe? Yeah. Well, to, to, to just discover that in, 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 a, in a book that was bought at an auction, and and uh, I took a fancy to to to, to build in the bottom of it, and that was it. That was it. It's a very very delicate piece of work as well. All of these wee struts in here. Yeah. All well, the wheel yeah, yeah, and so yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. You had to take everything down, you know, and you reduce the size of the boat. You had to, you yeah. had to bring everything down, the rowlocks, the doors, the seats, and everything. Everything. And, uh, and the planking. Right. So, uh, all in all, all, like, it was interesting, though. So, uh, was... if you were making that full scale, a full size, it would have been easier for you, I would imagine? Well, you'd, 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 uh, you could cover up mistakes. A lot quicker in the bigger one than in the small one. Yeah, yeah. It was on the strength of Jimmy's reputation as a builder of the full-sized boats that Cathy McAlevey, already an experienced enough sailor in her own right, approached Jimmy about eight years ago with a novel idea, that she become effectively his apprentice so that he could pass on some of his skills to her. Jimmy considered himself retired and Cathy was starting from scratch. But from that rather unpromising beginning, they have together come a long way. And Cathy has now almost finished her second boat, which she has completed mostly by herself within Jimmy's earshot in the workshop beside the cottage. You can see for yourself that he must have been a good teacher and she a willing pupil. You know, you never really kind of thought you were being taught. Mm. Although I do remember when we were riveting the boat and there's a sound and it shouldn't sound tinny, right. you know, or hollow. Right. You should be able to hear the nail, you know, on the dolly. Mm. And, I, and he'd be there saying, hollow, that sounds hollow. And he'd be in, the, he'd be in his cottage and I'd be there like, <laughs> I'd be trying he, to he do hear, it. He would hear you <laughs> he even hear in there. You. Right, and he'd be right, shouting, right. I can still hear it's hollow, you know. Yes, yes. Um, well, he wanted to be make sure that you were doing things right. Right. And that you were yeah. learning the right, yeah. the, right, the right things and so on. So what, as I'm saying, whatever pride he took in his work, he wanted you to share that, obviously, yeah. as well, and do the thing. So eight years you've been coming here. I, I thought I'd only, I was going to build one boat, yes, you know, yeah, but then yeah. it turned into a friendship. Because that, when we finished building the Shannon, I, I don't, he didn't really feel that he was up to building another boat. And then I pestered him until we, we, we start. Well, I said, well, what are you going to do? Like, you know, um, and, and so he agreed. But... Um, and even now he says, oh, it's one boat too many. And I said, yeah, but you made it, you know? So I think, I think... I think he enjoys the company. I think he does. He enjoys the company. He does, As much yeah. as anything else, I think. And know. it's an excuse to come yeah. out to the workshop. It's an isolated, possibly, potentially lonely place otherwise, isn't it? I mean, he's right down here. The college is... You have to really go and look for this you college do, to don't find you? it. Yeah. Unless you pass it back out in the lake or something. Well, like even that. from the water, you can't see it. You can't see no, it. it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Like, because the rushes... Um, last year, we, we cut a cut through the cut. Yeah. And when you're down there, you actually can't see the water. Mm. So when we got out to the other side, it was like, you know, finding the Pacific. Yeah. You know, <laughs> then when you're on the outside, uh, you actually... Uh, whatever way the level is, you yeah. actually can't see. But you, you've obviously got a lot out of the whole experience. And also, I see probably you were speaking to Jimmy earlier, like he, he, he must be one of the few people left who really knew all of the people who lived on the islands mm. of Loch Ree. Mm. And 
you know, and a way of life that, you know, is really gone, which yeah. is which is sadly gone in a way. Mm -hmm.